Being with who they feel the most confident on, most professional player on and off the rift, and looking across from her is Dara, the Korean support from Rampage. So he certainly showca showcased his mechanics in the last game on LeBlanc, and looking to do it here again in the 1v1. Interesting start up a top laner versus support. Neither team was aware of the order of the other, and the rest will be obscured throughout the rest of this 1v1 until we reveal each player, but this will be an interesting one. Now, theoretically, when you think about this, who should have the best 1v1 mechanics? Well, it should be your two solo laners, so your mid laner and then your top laner. Typically, you'd say the mid laner because they require a bit more mechanically intensive champions like that LeBlanc. And then you would say your AD carry. So what we should expect is kind of, you know, mid, AD carry, and top to come out. But the fact that Japan are front-loading with their support, I think, says two things. A, it shows that Japan still here to have fun. And B, that Dar is a really mechanically abled support. We saw that last game. He did, what, 40% of his team's damage? Yeah, for a while, at least. Pre-15 minutes. And absolutely by the way, absurd. As we get into the bands and picks, uh, I like that respect. Getting rid of the Urgot, getting rid of the Nasus. We're going to have some bloody 1v1s this time. No farming to 100. Tom Kench and Syndra are up next. That's my favorite thing is the Nasus ban. Get that guy out of here. I'm here for the first blood. Yeah, Callista is now banned away. We saw that tearing it up yesterday. And Caitlyn, so very, very smart ban aways. Just generally speaking, let's see what they decide to opt for against each other. So the Tom Kinch was really uh, prioritized by Turkey when we saw the 1v1s. They dominated with that champion, forced it to be banned. Callista was uh, the flavor from Southeast Asia, which it makes sense. Great dueling champion, range, has executability. But I like the fact that you can clearly see that Dara is here to kill people. Although as we say that, he's like, I've actually just eliminated all of the other power farmers. And now I'm just going to take a really long range poking champion. And I'm going to farm it out either way. Yeah, he's trying to stay safe and hasn't locked that one in just yet, or has he? No, he hasn't. Yeah, yeah. He has okay. not so locked he, Oriana in. They cannot no, the see Oriana, the champions. Oriana, however, is locked in finally. So Heliar takes that. Now they can see each other. And this allows them time to set up their masteries and their runes accordingly for the matchup that they will face in the 1v1. Mm -hmm. So first and foremost, talking about Oriana. We've seen uh, kind of some hit and miss Orianas. I believe she's been played once, and she started out AD. But Naru? I, no, that wasn't that wasn't Naru. It was Orion and Cassiopeia. The main yes. thing though is that in this matchup, uh, she can take her E, and if she chooses to go AD again, she can literally just run forward at people, and she can almost out-trade almost any champion, especially if Varus misses his Q, by just having that clockwork wind-up, as well as the uh, bonus shield on her if she has a Doran's Blade. So watch right. to see how we play the level one. Yeah, play like a defensively offensive champion. The level one should be pretty interesting. We could still be in for a farm fest. You gotta play it out safe, and you don't wanna give up early games, start to lose that momentum as we load on to the murder bridge. I mean, the meta that I've been seeing is it's all about the bush. That if you get control of the bush, you've almost just uh, single-handedly won at least the first wave control. And if you do want to play this out towards that 100 CS, it's really important. You know, where are you freezing your wave? How are you trimming the wave? Are you standing in the back caster creeps when they go to trade on you so they take a little bit extra chip damage because the creeps change up their aggro? It's these tiny little things uh, in your wave management control rather than just hitting all your skill shots that have really made or break these 1v1 champions. Absolutely. We'll see if the Oriana or if the Varus comes the out. Bush. Big. More range. That, bush control, very important. They uh, both start with AD, Doran's blades, and potions all around. Helior is going to face check, though. And he, he started with the e. first auto. Hail yes. Varus comes in. This is nice what I'm trade. talking about. This is the any Oriana. This is the uh, the Faker special for the longest time. Oriana's used to start Q, and then Faker really showcased that champion way back in season three. He started E, and he just ran at people and just like, come at me now. You cannot kill me. This is going to be good. Uh, Heliar, though, yeah, talk about front loading. Your more powerful players. Heliar is definitely one of those picks. Uh, and I'm really curious to see how he kind of builds this Ori if he goes for the same kind of thing where he just maxes the E. He's got the Doran's Blade, and he's against the uh, E from Dara. So Dara's looking to thin out this creep wave and try to get it pushing in his favor. I feel like Hellier should be so, yeah, just be more aggressive here. Yep. Ooh, what, Matt? Is that close for the Undying? I missed it. I looked away for a second. We've seen a couple of those I on the bridge. I wish I could see the Mastery. Yeah, be nice. Uh, Heliar does take a little bit of punishment, but they just keep farming it out, and you can see both teams in the back is very tense. Remember, the winner of this best of five moves on to the finals later today and gets a chance at the All-Star event next week. So I did get confirmation that it is Death, Fire, Touch, and Grasp of the okay. Undying for their masteries here. So watch how those will interact. But who's got what? Death, Fire, Touch, Grasp of the Undying. Ah, there we go. I pointed, but. <laughs> yes, you did. Off screen. We'll keep that one hidden from you. No, the, the Varus. It's funny because in standard, Varus will more often go, of course, that Deathfire touch. And yeah, you're not going to take Grasp on Summoners. But 
1v1 is a very different beast. I'm watching how he's contesting for this creep. So we're pretty much straight even right now. Dar did miss one of them, so he's actually CS behind. Are they actually just going to gentlemen's agreement? I'm surprised. Not hit each other at all? I am actually really surprised that they have done that so far, other than the level one pre-minion. Hellier's not even using his Q to zone there off. There we go. He's literally just playing Orianna as a straight AD carry. Like, he could throw out the ball, have it sit on the back caster creeps, and at least threaten Dar that when he wants to come for the, the CS, that there he's either go. taking a Q plus two autos. I just feel like every Orianna player is just a bit timid. Well, he's a very defensively minded champion, right? Got well, the shields. He's also a top laner, you know, might not be as fluent on a pick like Orianna than, say, a mid lane would be. Very true. And, we, you know, he does tend to pick very defensively minded champions in that regard. We saw the Poppy. He did make big plays. But he definitely plays a little bit more on the back, and the grass being dying, keeping him healthy. He's, uh, this what is he, a minion, though. He's doing is he's conserving his mana to make sure that he can trade successfully with that E. Um, always disengaging from Daria's uh, AoE and then trying to absorb at least one or two auto attacks with that shield, as opposed to expending any excess mana by throwing out his Q. Yeah, and he keeps healthy by, he just keeps auto attacking whenever he gets it back up. And I don't necessarily agree with it, but it has, oh, actually now it's evened up, I was gonna say, but he has- He's missing minion. He created a lead initially for himself by having about two extra creeps, but now he has fallen behind uh, three creeps. Oop. Dodges most of the damage, but he's autoing quite a lot, and Dara's down to half health. The health relics are not gonna respawn for a little while still. The summoners, too. Let's talk about them, because we haven't really got into it. It's the barrier versus the ignite, and of course, both are rocking the exhaust, but that's standard affair at this point. My problem with taking exhaust on picks like the Caitlyn and like the uh, Varus, yes, they're great in a 1v1, but unless you're in a Going situation in. like this... Oh, man. And he's going to be able to walk for the health oh, relic no. and Zondar away. That it's was a big power move. Disaster. But my thing, again, on the exhaust is Varus should really never be in a range of threat because he is such a long-range AD carry to be able to use that exhaust successfully, especially against a champion like Orianna, who doesn't have a gap closer on to you. It's not like she can zip to you. She has to walk up to you. Yeah, speed boost can definitely help out. However, uh, really being able to walk forward, Dara miscalculates and throws his Hail of Arrows backwards. Staying under tower, though, as he does not want to miss this minion wave. That would put him in really deep. And we said that this probably wasn't going to be farmed out, but at the same time, you know, so much pressure and anticipation. Winner of this will go to the finals and that chance to represent their region on the all-star stage next week in Spain. So it does make sense that you're not going to risk it all on kind of a one all-in first blood scenario, that maybe you will just try to uh, ban out the other farm-heavy champions and look for the safe win. And that's a really big deal for Heliar especially. This is a guy who was part of the LAS team in the previous oh no. International Wildcard All-Stars as he tanks a tower. That's really punishing because he doesn't have any mana left. And again, all he's been using his mana on is to help him win out these trades by having that uh, surplus health on the shield. He's got six, though. He doesn't so have he any mana. No mana to use it, unfortunately. And the health relic is clutch for Dara. Yeah, so the advantages keep trading. He's missing minions now. No. He actually hasn't even taken a point in Q. <laughs> no. Well, that's the same that we've seen so far. Ah, it's exactly the same that it was played in. Yep. And remember, we haven't seen either of these guys back. That's the critical thing. Even though Dara was forced incredibly low, he actually did not back away. Well, we're also evened out again on CS as long as Dara can hit this one. There he goes. So again, back to 42 on 42. And the wave's in a relatively neutral position. Hellier really wants to start shoving it in and try to uh, interrupt Dara's, excuse me, Dara's CSing with the tower shots. Yeah, not been able to do it just yet. As he gets the shield on, again, blocks a bit of the damage from the Hail of Arrows, but now it's starting to push Dara's way. Heliar takes his own health relic, and into the brush goes Dara to try and obscure himself a little bit more. Now his uh, melee minions are on the exact same target, although as I say that one of them wanders off to the side. <laughs> I'd be mad. Because, again, that would help your wave push forward. I think he's going to try to zone this. Oh, man, he's, he's gone all in. Grasby and Dying, there's no Ignite still, and he's still got both of his summoners available. Unfortunately, neither of them do damage. He's going to have to settle for the trade with Dara. Yep. Low on mana, both of them. Finally getting more confident. The fact that he does have the summoner advantage still has that barrier available, while Dara's uh, exhaust and ignite are just about to tick over. So we'll see if Hellier times this correctly. Doesn't want to be on the field when both those kill summoners are up. 
Yeah, this is really, really dangerous. He's very low health bars. He's still missing a couple of minions. Instead of Last City, he's been very actively trying to push this wave the entire time to force it under tower. It just requires so much patience and diligence to just sit there and say, okay, I have to be all about the creeps. Because sometimes you just uh -oh. get bored. There's the ignite. There's the hail. There's the auto. Helior. Done. He's done so. What? The barrier. Oh, he jukes it, but not in time. And Dara takes the victory. And unfortunately, he doesn't have the Q, so the only way he can hit the shockwave is by how he positions close to Varus. And again, Varus, one of the longest range 80 carries, is never in that threat. So unfortunately, Hallier.